I know y'all saying it's a whole different setup. We're not in the basement in the hood, man. We had to do it properly and stuff. Got a couple of uh, return guests and two new guests that we never had on the block. Uh, the first guest we got is my co-host today, Sherelle Carter. She's the host of Let's Talk, the show. It's not a podcast. <laughs> and she, uh, she also a nail technician, um, Nails by Real. And she was on episode 30. What's up? What's up? Uh, we got old head. She's not old, but I'm saying like she original. <laughs> <laughs> she was on episode 13. She was one of the first people I hit up to get on the show. Uh, unpopular Ashley, aka Ashley Mack. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> she's a mother, a wife, and she's the owner of Simple Dot Natural, and she's a great poet. You feel me? Thank, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we got another person who was on here on episode 54. Your favorite plus size uh, model, Peter. Brand, brand ambassador. Peter. Brittany Newton, what's good with you, Brittany? What's that? What's that? And we got some new people on the show who ain't never been on the show. You know what I'm saying? We got Adore. Adore is one half of a podcast. Um, Real talk with Adore and Daisy. What's going on, Adore? Hey, thanks for having me. And we got somebody I know. I don't know, but I kind of know, but I really know. <laughs> right. We got Jasmine Jackson. And she, hey. She's also a mother and wife. And she's the owner of Detroit Black Coffee. And, yes. oh yeah, Sherelle and Jasmine both went to the best high school in the world. Woo, woo, so, 30, 30, yeah, 30, so 30. Michigan high school. <laughs> no, we did hey, not. Hey, no, so listen, before we, uh, before we start, we got a toast, because this is 100 episodes. Uh, I mean, Trace. Yeah, 100 shows of uh, um, not getting spent and all that good stuff. So we're going to toast um, to growth. Uh, success and more opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Like Congratulations. Congratulations. But we start off everything with a salute me while I'm here. For y'all who don't know, you got to salute somebody, but it can't be the normal. It can't be your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your wife, or your husband. It got to be somebody out of that, out of the norm. You know what I'm saying? So while y'all think on that, I'm going to salute myself. You <laughs> <laughs> said out of the norm and say I'm going to salute yeah, myself. I got to. Just because um, she had a hundred episodes. I had to do a groundwork, get everybody on the show, make sure people don't spin me and stuff like that, man. So I'm going to salute myself. I'm going to salute my uh, producer, Q. You know what I'm saying? Big homie, uh, he put everything together. I don't pay him a dime. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he edited all my videos and shit, he just be there. And uh, I'm going to do some honorable mentions. I'm going to... Just because it's my show, I can in, I can salute people close to me. So I'm going to salute my wife. She in the background. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You, salute you better salute team. your queen. I'm going to salute, salute my kids and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, salute myself again. So it's on to Sherelle. Um, I am going to salute. I'm going to salute a teacher. An old teacher that I, uh, that was my third grade teacher. Shout out to Miss Price. She might be dead now because she was. Oh, she's dead. That was kind of messed up. <laughs> <laughs> For real, though. For real. So, salute to Miss Price because she was, she was a real one. She was definitely like a grandma. I didn't have a grandma. So, um, and she's been on my mind lately. So, I don't know. Maybe she died. That's not a salute. That's like a shovel. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was. All right, Ashley, <laughs> right, who you got, who you saluting today? You know, I just want to say, with your salute, you sound like Snoop. Like, first off, I want to thank my knee. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know what? I kind of want to pat myself on the back, too, because it's the end of the year, and I went hard this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did yeah. go hard, but other than me, I definitely want to salute two of my friends that I met earlier this year in a business class. One is... SP and the other one is Garnet. They're both business owners, mm -hmm. successful, and they kind of like took me under their wing and like been helping me. And just, I just want to say thank you, ladies, and keep up the good work. Bad, bad. Salute, salute, salute. What about you, Brittany? I want to give the flowers to all the ladies in the room. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. It speaks volumes that you're here. So, yes. Thank you. yes. Flowers thank you. to you all. I'm here for the love. Thank you. Yes. All right, what about you, Adora? <laughs> I want to salute um, the strangers that I met this year. They, <laughs> they're not no longer strangers, but I feel like when you start a business or just when you start anything, most of the time it's a lot of people that you don't know that mm -hmm. reach out to you, mm -hmm. yeah. that give you your flowers and right. keep keep you going. So I want to salute everybody that I met this year that I didn't know prior to the podcast. For sure, for sure. Salute, salute. <laughs> um, Me? I actually want to salute my sorority sisters. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm a part of a small organization, Lambda Size I Sorority Incorporated. And when I tell you every last member send me text messages telling me to um, keep grinding, you know, they buying my coffee, no matter what state they're in, they're gifting it to everybody. Mm -hmm. So I want to salute them. Please. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Now, this That's is going to be different because we're going to have some topics that some people might not want to touch on, some people might not have an opinion on, so... It just is what it is. You feel me? So we're going we gonna to start off everything, though. Tell me about your year, 2021. Give me the ups. Give me the downs. You know what I'm saying? Give me all that for y'all year, man. What's going on? Who you starting with? It don't matter. Go ahead. I'm going to start. <laughs> so this year was actually, like, one of my biggest years for my business. I, um, I started right before the pandemic hit. So when the pandemic hit, I'm like, dang, what am I supposed to do? So I started doing these porch pickups. Mm -hmm. You know, we were quarantining, so I was dropping stuff off on people's porches and running. <laughs> and um, but I opened up my mobile coffee shop this year. Mm -hmm. That thing no. right there had me crying all night. Okay. <laughs> because it took months for because we built it ourselves. Oh. Like we went out there, we put the floors in, the cabinets in, the countertops in the plumbing, we did all of this, and then it was done, but it, it took a long time to do something that took so short to do. For sure. So it was like, oh my goodness, I was like fussing at my dad, <laughs> because I had these cabinets in my, ga my garage for like three months. It took him two hours to put these cabinets in Damn. my trailer. Damn. I was so mad, like, I know. <laughs> You're not done. <laughs> There's no way these cabinets been in my garage, and you done. Yeah, it's for sure. quick. So this year it's actually been like, uh, but uh, exciting. Uh, like yeah. I can't believe I did it. You know, yeah, yeah. got your own streets. Yeah. Like it's mad. It's yeah. paid for. Can't nobody take it. So this year has just been. Oh, thank you, Lord. Like I, I've been enjoying this so much. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure, Congratulations sure. on a great year. Yeah. yeah. That mobile bar, that's that's dope. That's that's different. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. But I love it. And shout out to having a dad to be there to help you do it. True. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody don't get that. Everybody ain't got that. He gonna fuss, but he gonna do it. Okay. And you, he might you can't cuss beat me that. out. <laughs> But he working while he cussing me out, so <laughs> I take it because it's getting right. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's not me. That's not me. me. I'll be cussing, working like, God damn, these damn kids. And, but he's <laughs> running, though, so I'll be like, yeah. All right, who, who, who going to talk about that year next? I'll go next. This year was, um, <clears throat> it went by fast. Sure. Um, this year broke me down and I built myself back up again. I learned myself. I took L's after L's after L's, but I never gave up. Um, I worked full time. I did the podcast full time. I go to school full time. Um, I work two jobs actually. And every day I wake up because I'm blessed to be here and I never give up. And then when I meet new people around me, especially black women, seeing that we could do this, it always give me hope to keep going. So I did learn a lot of lessons this year. Yes, shout, shout out to, out to the resilience. You. Yes, yes. That's the yeah. dedication pushing through. Okay, the yes. Dedication. Oh yeah, for for y'all wondering like why I got all uh, females on the show today, I just wanted to show females love because a lot of my good conversations be with be with the ladies because the dudes be kind of like too tough to tell you know some good stories. <laughs> <laughs> they, want, <laughs> they do. They want to keep their image. Up. Yeah, okay. for sure, for sure. So I just wanted to salute y'all and just you know what I'm saying make sure I have some presentable women on the show to talk about what they got going on. Hey. So that's, that's just for people that's wondering, like, what, where, where the brothers at? You know what I'm saying? Bump them. No, right. I still got to support them. No, I ain't. <laughs> <laughs> just for today. I said it. What? Why you talking, Brittany? Go ahead, because I know you had made a post. Um, <laughs> you had made a post earlier. Um, what? Well, not earlier in the year, but like recently that you was going through some things and you had to kind of like bounce back. So yeah, if you could speak on that a so, little bit. This year. I experienced, like, the hardest and longest, like, stint of depression I've ever experienced in my life. Um, I lost my father last year to COVID, and I guess, like, the effects of, like, really feeling him, like, not being here really put a damper on me. Like, mm -hmm. it was... I damn near wasn't able to, like, really function as myself. Mm -hmm. I was not myself. I wasn't... I didn't have any motivation. I just... It was like, fuck it. I'm gonna just be here. Yeah. But... I got myself out of that, and here I am today. Shout out for that. Yeah, shout sorry out. about the rest of your dad. Thank you. Yeah, yeah rest in peace. Rest in yeah. peace. Thank you. What about you? Go ahead. We might as well go to Soul Train. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this year I feel like I had the highest highs and the lowest lows. Like, this 
2021 has been packed and I feel like I've just been taking it all in stride. And to be honest, last, like a couple days ago, I had to go to the hospital because I thought I was about to die. And I just feel like I was just pushing myself too hard. Mm -hmm. So I feel like no matter like all the accomplishments I did and all the downs I had, like I really learned that I need to take better care of myself. Like you yeah, got to... Yeah take a step back and self-care yeah. like people say and i used to feel like i was preaching it and then it's like was i actually really taking that time to relax and sleep and eat and not just worry about you know like is my business going to grow how can i get new customers how can i move forward what's next what's next it's like i'm a person too mm -hmm. and i need to come before the business so. yeah so uh, uh, so you say the business was doing good but you was kind of like you was want to overdo, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we can just overdo things. Like, things could be moving in motion, yes. but you just, you constantly wanted to grow, you constantly wanted yeah, to be seen. I, mean, I feel like it was so much happening for me at one time, and I just wanted to make sure that I could fulfill all of those, like, mm. uh, requirements. Like, for example, okay, November was, like, my biggest, busiest month I've ever had. So I got invited to do All Things Detroit, which is a, a mm -hmm. pop-up at Easter Market. Then the same person that threw that was like, hey, we want you to come be in that TEDx Detroit. So I'm like, you know, you, you're That's not going to say no. That's like, dope. okay, right. boom. And then another friend was like, hey, come do these pop-ups here. So I'm like, about to do these too. And then... I got accepted to uh, my first retail spot, and Ooh. they were like, I need 10 of every product. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you happy because you like doing all this, but then you have to remember that I'm one person doing, doing all everything. of this. And these are big events, mm -hmm. like really big events and big like requirements. So, you know, I'm doing it all, but it kind of like now it's December. I'm like, wow, this is really kind of this last month really took a toll on me because yeah. I was just working, 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 you know. You got Black Friday, you got Thanksgiving, you know, like all of that happening in one month. It was yeah. a lot. But she, you got through it though. I did. I'm here. Yeah. That's, yeah. Look, that's why I almost didn't make it. <laughs> for sure, for sure. What about you, what's a real man? Hold on, before we get to my, I just wanted to say um, that when you have a business, you always want to pray that you, you're profitable and you're most productive as possible. And when you said that, only thing that made me think in my head was just that don't drown in the. Uh, the flood you pray for. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, that's that is true. Oh, so you preach like it was Sunday. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 I think about yeah, that because I had a friend and she was like, anytime it get hard on me, I always, actually, I'm going to shout her out, Taylon Taylor, that's my girl. Um, she, all, she, we had a conversation, she was like, anytime things get hard, I always say, God is saying, do you really want this stuff yep. that you prayed for? Like, yeah. can you really handle all the yep. stuff that you asked for? And I'm really like, you know, I can't say that I want A, B, and C, and then I manifest mm -hmm. it, and then I say, like, oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I always yeah. say, Lord, help me be able to handle what you okay. said in my way. There you go. Yeah. I got a lot of kids and a lot of stuff, so I'll be like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to do all of this <laughs> Right, stuff. right. And still be good at all of these areas. Yeah, so that's my prayer every day every day i'm happy you said that because right now i'm taking some time off because i really want to sit down and decide like how do i want next year to look so mm -hmm. i can have it Thank comfortable you. like yeah. i still can accomplish all these things that i accomplished and you know keep moving forward but it just can be done with more finesse mm -hmm. you know more it's plainly. a mire in here y'all be moms wives yeah, yeah. 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 Do this. yeah. Like, and exactly. I, i'm not a mother so it's like y'all still do this y'all make it look good y'all make it look easy it's, i got married this year and i'm playing my wedding and i'm doing all this stuff i'm like yeah. I, next year I want to take it easy. <laughs> no, for sure. You guys sent me that quote too. That was a good quote. I'm gonna yeah, go ahead and post on Facebook and make it on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I'm already putting. It on. <laughs> so what, what, what was your year like um, before we get into some good conversation? My year, I would say my year was really about. Uh, I need a refill. You know, I always <laughs> <laughs> pass the ball down. Really, uh, um, really, just analyzing a lot of the relationships Thank around. You, queen. Me. Honestly, I think 2019 was. You know, you kind of got to sit still and just look at everything in 2020. What's this year? 2021 for me was really just um, acting on it and creating really healthy boundaries. That's really all my year was about. Mm -hmm. um, and also, like, her testing to see if, you know, what I said I wanted was really what I wanted. And to get my—it was really just, you know, setting boundaries up with other people, with myself, um, 
and really just, you know, seeing if it's really what I want. And mm-hmm. if a lot of people is who I really want in my life, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, that's a word right there. Yeah, boundaries. That sure. word alone. Mm-hmm. Boundaries. Okay. Say and that again. It's sick, though. You just learn it. Like, I feel like I never learned boundaries no. so early on. Like, I Your feel like, well, I never knew that. feel bad about it. They do, right? Or I think, people close, just family in general. Yeah. Like, that, that generation just feels respect is something different. Entitled. It's like a force, like a... I don't even know what to describe They're very it. entitled. They're very entitled. They can very. say whatever they want to say to you. You shouldn't have nothing Girl. to say about it. And that's, that's like, something I'm big on teaching my son. And they got son. the wrong one. Okay. <laughs> on the right day, though, okay? No. Uh, <laughs> my son boundaries, too. No. Uh, I my son that, all that was our word of yeah. the year. Boundaries. <laughs> yep. That's yeah. it. You need to respect my space. You need to respect my peace. Absolutely. He can say no to If he doesn't want to do it, he doesn't want to. He's too. Mm-hmm. He don't tell you no. He can say no, because I want him to be able to say small no's and be able to say big no's when it's time as well. Okay. So, come on. Hey. To that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to know what two-year-olds say no to? Like if you sitting in a room and you be, hey, come turn this light off. They can tell you no. They in another room, right? Yeah. No. 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 I don't respect no's like that. <laughs> See, that's, that, that I, no. I heard you no. podcast <laughs> on this before. So that's why I'm like, let me ask. No, 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 no. You do what you, you do. What I say. <laughs> the remote control will be right next to me. Hey, come give me remote control. <laughs> See that? That's come. that shit. That's yeah. That's, that's that dad that's shit. shit. That's, I never tried that on but you know what? Kids. That junk. Hey, your dad gotta be there to do that. Your mom is there to hug you and pat you in the back and rub you. So your dad gonna in my house. It gotta be a yin go. and a yang. You gotta have it both. You can't have two people no. that's gonna come in the same way. You gotta have two different angles. So then no. when you get my older, you see two different things. That's dad's statement. Mm. No. So mm-hmm. only dads mm-hmm. have to respect. No. So only moms spoiled. have to respect boundaries. Like dads don't have to respect boundaries. My mama didn't boundaries. respect mm. the damn thing. Still don't. <laughs> no. No, you don't respect that. Come on. You, you, you my son. You my daughter. You gotta, you know what I'm saying? But, I will understand. Like I will take it. I might take a minute to listen to you. I might, but you know, what I'm saying That's once deep. once I come up with something, it's me. That's deep. It's me. It's me. And you need that because my dad was my dad was too tough. But it gets you through those situations when you go through tough moments, mm-hmm. and then you remember that. But then you got you know, what I'm saying my mom, you know, she give me a little hug, whatever. You know, I'm sorry for being your ass. But, but <laughs> do you think it was a better way for your dad to do it instead of being super hard on you? Like, is it a median, a medium? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I got a lot of his ways. Not I, ain't, I don't beat my I don't beat my kids down nothing like that. But I, I talk to him. That's the only difference is between me and my pops. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit more com- it's a little bit more conversation. But you need that. You need Ike Jesus. You need those two. Uh, you need those two. You know what I'm saying to to meet up and then you get the best of both worlds. You feel me? But speaking on your mental health and stuff because both of y'all kind of touched on it. And, uh, you know, around this time of the year, that's when shit, depression hit hard because yes, you got some situations where you ain't got family. It's the holidays. Yeah. You might not have money. You got kids. You know what I'm saying? So what do y'all do to keep y'all peace and y'all, y'all, y'all you know, everything sane? Peace. Yeah, where your peace come from? <laughs> First of all. <laughs> she said, I ain't got it. I, I do. I do because she said, what's that? I literally, okay, so a few years ago, I want to say like seven years ago, I fully got saved for real, for real. I went okay. to church for real, for real. I was, I've been in church my whole life, but I did it for real, for real, right, for me. Mm-hmm. But I always said I wanted some peace because I got a mama that, that get on my nerves that Baby. I love so much mm-hmm. that my daddy get on my nerves, and I love him so much, and I got a lot of kids. Well, I didn't have a lot of kids How many kids, kids do you have? Yeah. Three. Okay. Cause That's it. Yeah, what's saying? I, 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 I thought you was like five. One is one. <laughs> two is two. That's three 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 is fifteen. That's what it's all that. I don't care what nobody said. Three is fifteen. <laughs> all that. I heard that. So, I've heard people say that because I got two kids now. They're like, stop there. <laughs> three is a lot. And my kids are 12, 3, and 2. But I always say, you know, I wanted some peace and I, I don't want to be bothered sometimes, you know, and it's okay. Because I had, like, one of those moms, like, I worked afternoons, but I still stay with my parents, right? You're not finna be in the bed. But I work afternoons, so I'm tired right now because mm-hmm. I got to be at work at 4 o'clock. So you couldn't I'm be in tired. the bed? You better get a chair. Oh, that would have been. Stuff. So when I, when I got married almost five years ago, I was like, Lord, I want some peace in my house. I want my house to be peaceful. I want my kids to have peace. Mm. And their house, you know, mm. this their home too. This is not just Ooh. my house. This is their home. So I prayed and prayed and prayed. And then I got a husband that's very, very, very laid back. 
and quiet mm -hmm. and nice. You know, I love that man. That is okay. my book. Can't Shout beat out it. to him. Can't <laughs> beat it. And he, he made sure I had a peaceful house. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, nothing going to mess this up. We could fight because in this house, we're going to be chilling. We're going to be peaceful. We're going to be happy. I don't want them to have to be like, my mom was getting on my nerves when I was 12 years old. And I don't want that for my kids. I want my kids to be like, I had a peaceful house growing up, a happy, peaceful house. Not saying I didn't, but they worked my nerves, but I don't really want to be that mama that's like nitpicking yeah, yeah. for no reason. I, I don't want to micromanage. Just do what you're supposed to do and, and go. Hey, it could be peaceful, yeah. but you could still get any nerves, though. No, no. No, I'm saying. Leave me alone. It could be a peaceful, like, you know what I'm saying? My mom's peaceful. You still getting your nerves, though? I'd be like, why are you here? I like that. <laughs> I'm go somewhere like that's now. not here. That's what I tell my kids. Go somewhere that's not right here. <laughs> because I'm right here right I now. Think, <laughs> you don't think people really saying? understand. I but he is how, very important. How people, like, it's very important. And I really don't think parents get that. I like, know. my mama, bro, oh, love her to death. Love her down boots. But, <laughs> Cheryl, <laughs> don't call me way. because you off work. I just got off work too. You don't want to be quiet. Maybe she want to talk to you. For what? Cause you got to talk to you. I don't want to talk. Friend. I want to be quiet. I don't want to see sometimes, nothing. Sometimes you know. I don't want to hear nothing. My house is loud sometimes, but it's mm -hmm. a good loud. My husband is a musician, so oh, my good. kids they play the instruments. They don't work my nerves. I can't, that don't I can't me. handle that. That talking, like, why are you in but my face? What do you mean? Just you just want to be right here. Yeah. <laughs> Get off no. like, Leave my me alone. No. Now, Adora, you don't have any kids. Alone. And you say you was going through some things, so how you find peace in your, you know what I'm saying? My house is peaceful. I don't think it could be more peaceful. Like, I'm alone. Um, well, forget the peace. What do you do to, to, to make sure your mental health is good? Put my phone on Do Not Disturb. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, Amen. There you go. I put my phone on Do Not Disturb. But I'm not on the internet. I'm doing things that I want to do. Like, and things that free me from the world is just writing. You know, writing about my day. It's me, the pen, and the paper. That paper can't judge me. They can't talk back. They okay. can't They can't cut me off when I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's what I do. And I go to church too. Mm -hmm. I go to church every Sunday by myself unless my hating job don't want me to go. But <laughs> um I do wanna speak on we got a movement um now that we started this year with the podcast. It's called You're Not Alone. We I just was had, gonna touch on that, yeah. We had a brunch last Sunday. Um it, it turned out very nice. I was real nervous about it. I had anxiety for seven days because I'm thinking <laughs> You know, doing this podcasting thing, a lot of people don't like positivity, and I've learned mm -hmm. that. Like, mm -hmm. so when you talk about positive things, you're not going to get as many views yep. versus if you want to talk about toxic or yep. somebody cheating on somebody yep. or why she mm -hmm. was being a side Facts. chick. Drama you sales. know, you're going to get a lot of views, and people want to talk about it and want to, you know, that's entertainment. I don't mind mm -hmm. talking about it, but realistically, you still got to talk about what's going on in the world. So we had this brunch, and we had a panel, and we had, like, six people on the panel, and they all talked about a time when they were alone how they got through it and, you know, what it made them feel like, what did they learn. And if someone is in this room in their shoes, what would the advice be? So we had a lot of people touch on subjects that you would never think people go through, mm -hmm. um, just looking at them and, you know, being these Instagram famous people. Yes. You never know deep down inside what people go through. You mm -hmm. never know. You just never know. And they talked about things, uncomfortable conversations that people are scared to have because they feel like, okay, if I tell you I went through this, you're going to judge me. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it was a non-judgmental room. You know, people was able to talk about their experience, and it helped, you know, everybody in the room. So... Mm -hmm. Especially in this season, people without parents, people without their kids, yeah. uh, people don't have the money. You just got to be happy that you woke up again today and that God gave you another chance to be here. Like, you know, people aren't grateful for the small things. But when I wake up and I open my eyes, I'm just happy off that alone because, yeah, I might be broke today, mm. but it's not going to last forever. I might Amen. not be happy today. But it's not gonna last forever, yeah, so you gotta learn how to appreciate the yes. small thing. Yes. Yeah, but when you're going through it, it's, oh, it's like forever. Pass that. It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Like the time goes. Yeah, like, like it's long, baby. Yeah, I've been broke for two years. <laughs> it's easier said 
been done. The little process. No, for sure. For but sure. it's gonna be that one situation that take you down through there, and you think you will never make it out. And that money not gonna mean nothing. Mm, yeah. That person that you thought was your friend not gonna mean nothing. It's gonna be the yeah. fact that God gave you another chance. Like, and you know, so. Yeah. Now, now you know, I always gotta bring some humor to the show. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about being broke and stuff? Like, you have been so broke, like you damn near put a tear to your eye. Yeah. Like, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Man, it was one Christmas I was laying. That's my wife, and you know, I, I, I'm a thug, so I can't cry. I'm thinking about all the bills. I'm like, eyes got to sweat. Like, damn. <laughs> like my, my, my son wants this. My my other son wants this. I gotta get her this. Like, what the? The bills gotta be paid. You and that mother stressed out. Mm-hmm. You ain't sleeping. You like well, getting bags. Well, that's when you ruin Christmas. Like, you know, Christmas ain't real. Everybody gonna make sure they Man, so uh, Sherelle, you you got anything? I want to hug it. I'm not used to having co-hosts and stuff. No, no, I think you was hitting on everything right. I'm just you following suit. Yeah, I'm just following. All right, now for the ones, I'm gonna get to the ones with mothers, but the ones without mothers, like, like how do what's the um having a business and you don't have any kids or nothing like that, like. Do you think about that? Like, all right, I got to make sure my business is at a certain level before I go ahead and branch off and have some kids. Like, is that thought? Um, it's not so much my business type thing. It's it's more of like, okay, I know I have this business. I'm doing this. But it's more of like my partner. Mm-hmm. Are you going to be able to handle me having a business and mm-hmm. having kids? Mm-hmm. Are you going to be able to hold me down mm-hmm. when I got to do this and do that? Mm-hmm. Are you going to be here with the kids? Or are you going to have a problem with it? So, so vital. it's no matter no matter where my bit bi- like my business is at. Partner. It is it, if you don't have a good partner, mm. it's it'll take you down through there. Yep. Like it ma- no matter where your business is at. Yeah. So I value the, the partner more than where I value where my business is at. Yeah, you type of, you sound you need like a fifty cent type dude because you're gonna get at him. If it can't be no soft person with you, like I don't absolutely not. <laughs> what, about, what about you, Adore? Do you think about that like? Because sometimes you go overthinking and then be like, damn, I'm 40. Yeah, true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, People ask me all the time, like, you know, do you feel like you're going to have kids? And I used to be that girl that'd be like, okay, by 30, I want to be married. I want to have X, yeah. Y, and Z. Like, But I don't even go by that anymore because Mm-mm. my life, if I had to plan it, mm. I would have been rich by now. I would have did this, did that. <laughs> no, fair. But, you know, it don't happen like that. So I just pray in my prayers that when it's my time, and when it when God see fit for me, you know, bring a child into this world and don't let them have to go through the same things that I went through. So it's not so much about the business, but it is about I do want the time. I want that financial freedom where I could be at yeah. home and be a parent, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So because these jobs, they, hold, they don't care that you got no family. They don't Shut care that no. they, they don't care that they you do they care. don't care. No, but you can't plan. You can never plan because it's never like right moment to have kids and nothing like that. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Prepared enough. You just got to because you, you just go through it once you had kids. Like you kind of like adjust. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I had my first son, I was I was young. I was 20. So it was adjustments on the fly. Like every five seconds, like, damn, like what do I do now? And jump like that. Then when you co-parenting, you really got to know how to make adjustments, and you got to be able to understand a little bit. You might hate that person, she might hate you, but you got to you know get through it and jump. You know what I'm saying? So, so for the ones with parents, I mean with parents, oh, for the one. Oh, I want to ask a quick Go question. ahead. Do if you two ladies that don't have kids, do you guys really want kids? Yes, I got nieces in it. I'm a super auntie. Me <laughs> too. I'm super duper auntie. And you yes. Like yes, super love being an auntie. Yeah. yeah. The you favorite think you like part being a mom though. I do. Yeah, yeah. I do. I I eventually want to have kids. Absolutely. But what I say is, and you know, Cheryl, my mama, she always Cheryl. Asking oh, Cheryl. Me. Your mama named Cheryl too. Yeah. <laughs> my mama named Cheryl. <laughs> she was your It's them Cheryl. girl. <laughs> always ask. So when the grandkids gonna come? When God wanted them to really? come? Really. <laughs> When God wants them to come. Damn, when she, she want my son? When God, uh, she want to watch him? G- girl, she Hey, man, grandparents watch, just want to go ahead and spoil some kids, kids, man. Love watching oh, people I got kids. kids that need... But yeah. I need a sitter <laughs> now. <laughs> <need a> <laughs> it's, more, it's more of like... It's like, where's the... The kids will come when the partner comes. Yeah. yeah. That's how I look at it's, it. It's, <laughs> do it that way. Yeah. Do, I do it that way. Yes. Because I had a baby at 18. Did Ooh. you? And and he won plant, <laughs> and and he won my boyfriend. All okay. Right. That, okay? It's the transparency. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, when I had a baby at 18, I had a baby at 18. Okay. He didn't, had, he didn't have a he baby. He ain't had no kids. Okay. I had a baby All right. at 18, and my mama reminded me every chance. You ain't no Especially chance. Especially my forget. daddy. This your baby. I know this is my baby. No, do you know this is your baby? My daddy told me, I'm not I'm not taking care of your kids. 
I'm not doing nothing. I help you, but I'm not going to do it. Okay. I had a baby at 18. I know your daddy. That's my papa all day. <laughs> I had a baby at 18. Now, my village is lit. Okay. I think, Shout out I, to think the village. I got the best village. And I'm one of those. You need a village for sure. Absolutely. And my village is hands on with my oldest, like my oldest son. Mm-hmm. My village is hands on. We don't, I don't keep no secrets. You know, we, we work together Isaac. with everything for him. And then I got married. But I wanted a lot of kids back in the day. I wanted a lot. <laughs> I, we I wanted talk, a baby. lot, a lot, a lot of kids. Cause, Cause I got questions. And like, then I had a baby, and I was like, "Who, who finna have <laughs> more?" Man, for real. You know what I'm saying? So right. I wait. I was like, "Ooh, I can't do this no more." Cause I'm gonna be on Snap. I don't, I don't like this <laughs> being nobody big mama. And I used to be like, "Stop telling That's people I'm, I'm your saying. baby mama." We just got the same son. I know I'm crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we, we don't even know each other, bro. Mm-mm. Don't tell nobody you know me. Because yeah. you don't know me. We, we You don't know me. Like, for, <laughs> for real. But when I had when I got married and had kids. It was different. Oh, my goodness. It was like night and day. Mm-hmm. It was so That's what, different. See? Somebody right there. The difference in the partner. Um, taking up. She wasn't the right partner. Feel. Not just mm-hmm. anyone. Mm-hmm. Well, you, like, I, I ain't had time to feel down because my husband's like right there. Yeah. Ooh. You know, so it was like. Hey, mate. It, it's some, it's some good dudes scary. out here, man. It's some good dudes, including myself. It was scary, though. Her husband, Kyle's, good dude. Right there. Right there. And it was so different. And I was like, this lit. This mm. is really what's up. So I have experience. Don't do it the way I did it the first okay. time. Get you the bomb, the bomb partner. There you go. Then have your kids because it's totally different. Yeah. It's, it's totally different. Now how do y'all uh, y'all balance that with the kids, with the husband, with your son? Like, How do y'all balance doing that but still trying to go ahead and make, you know what I'm saying, the business work, whatever y'all got going on, work out? I think that I've learned after just talking to people that um, no balance is balance, mm-hmm. especially when you have kids. And I, I've learned that what looks like chaos to other people is my system. So my son running around screaming in my house looking like, you know, I hate to say Katrina, like, came through it. That's cool, though, because I was managed to get two hours of work done. Mm-hmm. He fed. He ain't dead. You know, still <laughs> still paid. Like, like, <laughs> I think I did pretty good. I got the work done, you know. So I think that a lot of it is really just understanding that, you know, just because it doesn't look like how Instagram says it's a look like or how you think somebody else's system looks like, what works for you literally works for you. Mm-hmm. So if my house got to be fucked up and I got to clean up 10 times a day, then I'm straight with that. My kid fed, the work done, we all good, everybody happy. That's the truth. You know, you can't beat that. Mm-hmm. What about you? Because, you, you know, you got a dope husband, I'm, man. I'm happy you said that because <laughs> I feel like I'm always so hard on myself about everything. Like, you got, you got when, my, when my house be a mess, I be like, Ugh, why? Why? Like, I got... But in, in, from your perspective... I have gotten a lot done. Yeah, you know? too. Like, it's okay. And my house, it, it works. works a hot mess. Oh my God. But, no. <laughs> the kids fed. Things got done. done. Yeah. If ain't nobody did, everything right. is good. Okay. <laughs> right. This is for the screen. Right. <laughs> if it's quiet, you it's something warning. bad. <laughs> it's but there's a certain okay. screen you listen for. Yep. And then that's when, because there you go. it's... I, I was breastfeeding, you know, Ooh, child. doing work, you know. Ooh, child. I got a kid that if he could get in my skin, he would. Oh. I know the feeling. You know, so it's like, <laughs> it's really not a balance. It's just, no. you just do it. Because, yeah. but the thing with me, like, I was a housewife mm. when I started my I want to be that so bad. No, you don't. I do. No, you don't. The no. pandemic. I, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, I you do. Don't. I, I, I pray it, for it every it's day. It's a beautiful System the crib with one kid. Not with I want to be at the crib. It's, it's the mom. A hundred percent of the time. Hard. Cause I, when I was a single mom, I used to work like sixteen hour shifts. You know, like six days a week or thirteen straight days, little stuff like that. So it's like, you know, this is harder than that was. You know, being a stay at home mom, cause it's twenty four seven. I know. Mm-hmm. Cause you want it to be as peaceful too for your husband, because he working. He working hard. Facts. So you don't want him to, <laughs> when he hungry, like I used to try to have dinner ready by okay. a certain time. Okay. I used to try to have a house looking 
Okay. Now I. I don't like to put on clothes, so I, I at like least put some earrings on. Like, you know, okay. when he Shut get home, to, I really feel to do you all that like kind it. of stuff. So I it's hate like, it's hard. It's hard. What it's the hard, fuck are they but for? It, it works. You know, um, I use my kids as like guinea pigs. You know, for my flavors. <laughs> you know, so I let them tell mommy what this tastes like. Because okay. if my kids don't like, well, they gonna it, tell it you the truth. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's like. What should I do? I have a three-year-old. He could tell you everything about coffee. Everything I know about coffee, he know about coffee. So it's like they're learning mm -hmm. everything, too. So I, I, I kind of use it, you know, make them feel like they're doing something sure. while I'm working. And that give me a little time, too. They working for sure. And for you never sure. know what you're inspiring. You never know what you're introducing exactly. them. I was what just you, about to what say. What seed is planted in them because mm -hmm. you're doing that. Mm -hmm. you, might get, you might get the financial side of your kids or one of them. You might get That's the scientist goal. side. Of, you know, you never know what seeds you're planting in your kids because they're going to blossom differently when you're doing that. So it's always dope to introduce them to whatever it is you're doing. Absolutely. I, I think really, it's, yeah. Go I ahead. can tell you much about <laughs> coffee, by the way. I had to read a book about... Uh, um, a guy in Yemen, okay. a coffee, Go and ahead, I never girl. knew how uh, big the coffee industry was, but they be making some bread. I with say it. it's like the best legal drug out there. Facts, you know, Facts. because it's you could get the same type of yeah. money in coffee that they doing with dope. Oh, sure. oh. So yeah, I, tell I me more. She's not lying. She's not lying. This thing on the street and it's legal. That's how I explain it to people. Yep. I'm like, I got the hottest thing on the street, and it's yeah. legal. So you want it? <laughs> well, you think you can get addicted to is a drug, honestly. And caffeine is. And a caffeine is up there. It's like in the top five. Oh like, yeah, exactly. But, so yeah. I be telling but people, y'all still like, buy the coffee though. Y'all still need to buy her coffee stuff. Y'all yeah. 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 buy Tylenol and stuff, and all that is is caffeine right. anyway. Mm -hmm. So just buy mine. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. What you about to say? Uh, Put it in the capsule, sis. <laughs> 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 she don't be popular, bro. Oh, but I was saying um, about like inspiring kids. So like, I started my company for my daughter, and it's funny because now she like recognizes what the term entrepreneur is, oh, yeah. and that's something like when I was a kid, I didn't even know. It's Had so no many, idea. Yeah, it's so many occupations that you don't really see mm -hmm. or experience. So it's like when people say represent representation matters like yes. that. It's really so good. true because not only does she know what that is, but when she goes to school and she tells her friends like, oh, yeah, this is what my mom mm -hmm. does. Or she's like making videos like I was going through my I deleted a video by mistake. And I was like, oh, let me go to my deleted folder. And I checked and she had like five videos deleted. I'm like, what is this girl in here talking about? She then created a whole ad for the company. Like, if you think the skincare works for you kids, it does. It. Oh, I did. It was yeah. so fun. It was so funny. But it was just like you see that she was like really involved, and you know she felt some ownership, you know, yeah. of everything. Mm -hmm. So sure. yeah. that was really nice. Shout out and, um, to shout out to her. Yes. Out there marketing, my the business. Right. Right. Yeah. She should. What's, and, um, oh, I was going to say, just to touch on what you were saying about having a partner, like, I, your story is very similar to my story. Like, I had um, a relationship in college, and I had a baby, and that was not, it wasn't it. But now I'm married, and we have a baby, and, like, the whole experience was so different. It was, like, it's blissful. Oh, so you it, you yes. know, it was like... <laughs> I want to have another baby. You know, like I be telling them, I'm about to give you another baby, but without <laughs> giving you the baby. Like I wanna, I wanna Don't have that. fun <laughs> making the baby. But, but I wanna give it to we you. We're not gonna bring another one. Right? Yeah. But yeah, it's we're like like one, huh? that is definitely important. Like I would sec, I would like to second piggyback on that. Like finding the right person to start a family with. Like just like you know, he was asking me when we first got here, like. Why Kyle not here? Like he at home with the baby, you know, because he would, he, you know, he understands that it's certain things that's gonna push me forward, and when I get pushed forward, mm -hmm. that helps our family and vice versa. So he's a rapper, and I have a business and I do poetry. So like we literally are just performers. Mm -hmm. I saw and, you at Easter. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. I didn't even know. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but so cute. yeah, so like we have to understand like. This needs time. You know, sometimes I have to pour into him because it's his time to shine. Mm -hmm. And I have to step back. 
and sometimes she has to do the same thing for me, you know, and, yes, and you know, like having somebody to say like, I'm gonna take the kids for a while, you just go downstairs and, you know, get these orders mm. out, you know? Yes. And that That's is important. So trying to tell you, it's in you the partner. Up, baby, what, what you there for? Exactly. Period. Exactly, exactly. Because <laughs> man <laughs> gonna get me up, look, baby, Look okay? at him, look at him. What man you there for? Man gonna get me up. <laughs> <laughs> Period. <The volume. laughs> because I can do bad by myself, okay. baby. I don't Period. need you. Uh -huh. That's nope. the thing. Uh -huh. Somebody needs to help you carry that load because when you got two people carrying the load, you can carry so much, so much right. more. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? And it's just those things, you know, those talks sometimes where you, you just feel it down and somebody just like, you doing a good job. Thanks, or you know, like, like, I see you out here, like, I'm proud of you. You know, like, sometimes I, have, that, I feel like I have. That, that, that can around. make a difference. That it makes really can. It makes yeah. a big yeah. difference. And I, mm -hmm. and I was dead because sometimes up. you be feeling like, niggas ain't really seeing what the fuck exactly. I'm doing. Yes, exactly. Like, but the fact that she see hard. me. Yes, oh, no, exactly. don't ever think they don't see you. They, they see, see me. Facts. They just ain't saying yeah. shit. Make, oh, post God. every day. I don't care how many likes oh, you get. I post every fucking day. They see you. And they talking about you. They sure is. I already know. You might not know. My ears be ringing. You might not know, but they see you. <laughs> All right, real quick, switch, switch it up. What y'all, what y'all, what y'all got going on in y'all business? What's something y'all feel y'all need to improve on that ho that's holding y'all back? Mm. Oh lord, social, social media, media. posts. Because oh I know. Oh my gosh, oh y'all saying social media? Shit, I'm about to learn. So like, oh, I'm surprised you say that because with the podcast we was talking about that off camera, like you need to be on that boy heavy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. See, my thing is this: when I was growing up, even in high school, my best friend made my Instagram page. She came up with my name and everything. She liked his name fit you. So here we are with a door. So. <laughs> Um, I just feel like social media, like I've seen a lot of people get rich off of it, but I also see people tear people down. I see people, they be on there for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. So like, I like to just not see that. So then I like, you know, did a cleaning of my timeline. You negative, you know, I'm just gonna follow you. But in my mind, I'm just so used to not having to be on social media. And now that I'm starting, you know, to get out here, like, um, I do need to post, you know, even if I post once or twice, right. that's more than just me because everybody's used to seeing me as a ghost on social media. Don't get me wrong. I'll be on there. I like your picture. <laughs> I tell you, you're doing a good job or, you know, I will watch stuff, but I just feel like it's so much hate on social media, but I still have to let that go over my head and just do what I need to do because people need to see, you know, what I got to say or Keep just your anything. Keep eyes on the prize. Mm -hmm. just, just stay, like, sometimes you just got to be so laser, laser focused that you see nothing but your goals. Like, yeah. it don't matter if your stuff going viral. It don't matter if it got 100 views. Like, I'm a, honestly, this, I have taken some time off of social media just because, like I said, I have been overwhelmed, like, with the past month. But I go hard on Instagram like I do it and it, it don't it, it's not perfect but it's entertaining you know mm -hmm. it's it's giving value you know it is it's getting me noticed a little bit more you know like I've had I think when I looked at my numbers I got like like 40% of my sales from Instagram so That's like, it. it's it. Working, yeah, you know? it does it's, work yeah and it's really just about you it don't matter about the other people around you. It's mm -hmm. just about you, like, I'm about to commit. Like, I did a challenge for myself where I did 30 days working on my business, and I posted, like, a reel every day where I was just like, this is something I'm doing today. This, And I'm just showing them whatever I was doing. And once I got in the groove of doing that, I'm like, okay, I like, once you tell yourself I can accomplish a goal, then you start believing it because mm -hmm. it's Absolutely. really all about your internal feeling about yeah, it. Yeah, power like, tongue for sure. I can do yeah. 30 days. And once you like, I can do 30 days. Now, when you're looking at a month, you like, that's nothing. I can exactly. do 30 days. Let me do 90. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, or, or it's not as overwhelming when you say, I'm going to post three times a week, you know, because three times a week, it don't seem like as much now. Mm -hmm. So you start yourself at like a high point and then bring it down like you still can do more quality now mm -hmm. you know you can take your time more but you don't feel you like okay i did 30 days so anything else now is just like okay let me keep going and True. something that really helps me i like to plan out my content yeah um especially if, if it's a lot of yes mm -hmm. i i try to post like i be you know researching like the algorithms or like instagram trying to see like what's the most beneficial things to do so at least post them once a day mm -hmm, um yeah. Of course, post on your story all the time, but like posting exactly on your page at least once a day is really helpful. But to piggyback off of his actual question, um, 
I, I guess you could like call like as business owners, you're also like a content creator because yes. you're c- yes. creating content for I'm your business. And if it gets difficult and it gets discouraging because, like you said, like okay, you want you want this video to do so many numbers, but it don't do those, num- mm-hmm. those numbers. However, somebody saw it. Yes, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. That's how Shy found me off yeah, Instagram. Sure. So I'm like, it's it's doing something, although it doesn't get the numbers. Mm-hmm. that I want is it's making a difference. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Let, me, let me say one thing. So it was a trend going on that really encouraged me. And it was two. It was two. One was a sound bite. Like, yeah, 35 people might not be a lot, but if 35 people walked into a room right Man. now to ask me what I was doing, mm-hmm. I'd be overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. And then it was another trend that was like, I got 300 views on my last video. I Googled what 300 people in one room look like. And that's a lot of people. Yeah. Like we are we are so our mind is so set on millions of views, thousands of views, mm-hmm. but three hundred people is a lot of people. It is yeah, a lot Ashley, of people. Have you and Kyle ever thought about being motivational speakers? I don't know. <laughs> 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 you know, I mean, that's where Adore. No, yeah. no, but yeah. like if you meet her and her husband, you'd be like, God damn, I wanna do better in my life. Because <laughs> <Like, laughs> <laughs> Kyle had me think like, oh, I need to go ahead and go home and I'm looking in the mirror like, I'm out. I'ma really mess sure y'all up with this one. I wake up at three in the morning every day. Oh, tell me why. On the weekends, everything. So Hold on, sis. Let's talk about it. No, that, no my granddad grand used to do that. Like, start yeah. early. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to pray. Yeah, I get up because that's when the world is asleep and it's quiet. You you know, you can tune everything out. So, like, luckily, you know, I don't have any kids, but I do got nieces and nephews, so they be with me sometimes. And I'll get up and I'll go in the living room or another room, but it's quiet. It's no distraction. So, like, whether you get up to pray, whether you get up to manifest, whether you get up to ship your orders, whatever, I'm done with my day by noon. Mm. Unless I got to do overtime at work. But realistically, when everybody getting up at 11 and 12, like the, the normal wor- world, I didn't did 90% or more than what yeah. you did. Even if you just write, pray, um, just sit there and do research, whatever it is that you choose to do, I feel like I'm way more productive at 3 in the morning. It's to the point, like, my phone going do not disturb at 7 o'clock at night, and I'm back up at 3. Like, Can I ask you a question? Because I am a night owl, so I'm... I'm up at 3 a.m., like, about to go to sleep the next hour. But I like the concept of actually waking up at 3 instead of doing it the opposite way. So what time do you usually sleep? Um, If I'm not doing nothing, I go to sleep by, like, 8 o'clock. Yep. Okay. By 8 o'clock. But um, the person who is, like, my motivation that, like, on bad days is T.D. Jakes, um, Steve Harvey. I love Steve Harvey. Like, love, love, love him. But... It's to the point I had to challenge myself because it's a lot of millionaires that's up at that time. Even Mm -hmm. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart get up. He go to the gym. He go take a shower. He go home. Then he in the office by 7.30, 8 o'clock. Like, Mm -hmm. even the people that I don't idolize the most, they all up at that time of morning. Like, so that's what, you know, I'm like, I'm still broke. I got to keep getting up at this time. Like, you know, so. I like that. I really like that. That is dope. I want to talk about this. You said you need two people or three people that really inspire you, and they're all men. Why do you think that is? Um, That's a good I question. I think I like I didn't even it didn't even cross my mind. Right. I was going through like this like uh, <laughs> I needed to leave in. somebody alone, so it was like I had to find other stuff to do. And music, okay, I can listen to that, but it starts it irritates me after so long. So I started listening to podcasts before I started a podcast. So then like YouTube would give you like a playlist, and then Steve Harvey just kept coming on at one time at one point in time. And the stuff that he said, he'd be like, I was homeless. I lived in a car. Like, you yeah, know, that type of stuff that. just made me adapt to him. Although, thank God I've never been homeless. But it's, I don't know. But I do like Sarah Jakes. Mm-hmm. I listen to her a lot, too. But I don't know why I just gravitate to Steve Harvey. I just don't know why. Like, that was just somebody that just helped me when I didn't have nobody else. I was just saying. I have a comment on that. Okay. And I think, go ahead. I was about to say that. I think that success looks so masculine. And I've been thinking this for a couple years mm. now. I think that okay. when you hear a lot of success stories, and I know this ain't even where we was going with this. Go ahead. Yes, <laughs> success looks so masculine. When you hear a lot of people, even EYO, which is one of the biggest financial literacy podcasts on your leisure, a lot of the guests that they have are men. Investors are men. And mm. success is success just looks so masculine. I don't see a lot you of women that tell a campaign story. for that. <laughs> that is it true. just doesn't look very feminine. Like, one of the first women that I really was like, oh, I love her, that's really big, or I would think is really successful, 
Karen Siva, Karen Siva, even though she's a little shady, but I'm just I'm been trying to see yeah. different women that are really high up and successful in media and through music. We don't see them as often. You see mm -hmm. Diddy throughout music. I've been uh, looking up more female producers. We just don't see a lot of women brag and boast about their success like we do men. That's mm -hmm. true. And it's so easy to find a Steve Harvey. Yeah. And it's like Oprah is up there, but it's like, okay, it's Oprah. Like, yeah, whatever. I like I like them, but my go-to is Steve Harvey. Anybody that watch my podcast, people be arguing with me like, no, Steve Harvey for these people where this, that, you know, and you know that, okay, that's your personal perce perception on him, but he once got me out of a depression right. that I thought, that. yeah, never, you know, like, it, I don't know it's how he talk, his tone, how raw he is because reality, I be needing to hear it raw. I don't always need to be on no paper like well you know you are broke today your <laughs> rent is still due I don't talk to me you know like be real with me like that's mm -hmm. kind of what I like so I don't know if that's what make me gravitate think, towards him I think it's because a man can appeal to a woman and a, and a man with women it's one time they just target women and that's what I was about so ain't no reason for us to even pay attention if it ain't nothing to do with us I was just about to say I think that's a lot of reason why a lot of women well. are girl bosses pink and it's like why do women and success have to be so soft why does it have to be so downplayed why is it not boastful why is it not big and why can I not just be a woman I don't need I'm, first I'm a grown ass woman let me hear you I'm not a kid I'm not a child and I'm damn sure not a girl okay. I'm a grown ass woman mm, okay? period and everything okay. about me is grown so why am I a not, not downplaying those movements because those are obviously very needed movements and they're very you know useful for young girls to see that representation like you said but why does it have to be a girl boss why am I not just a boss like Rick Ross why am right. I not just mm -hmm. a diddy you know okay. what I'm saying yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was just wondering that when you named it I was like damn that's me too and I really thought about it like why do I only really like men mm -hmm. like you know see now you gotta go ahead y'all gotta sell yourself to everybody <laughs> yeah but don't yeah. Yeah. Don't, get, <laughs> don't get me wrong we well slept on and you know like when people be you really get up at 3 in the morning and I do it behind the scenes like yeah. I said I'm not a social media but I think for the new year for January 1st I'm gonna start that. I'm going to start like a movie. Tap in, let me know you woke. Let me know you doing something. Yeah, I want to yeah. see, oh you know. God, I, yeah. like, I be up at that time. All yeah. the time. I love that. Like, that might change my, uh, <laughs> that might change my whole life. You change your life. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay, like, can I ask a question bad. really quick? Go ahead. Okay, so, kind of like what you was talking about, about like, men are like boastful and stuff. Like, what do you guys think about when people say you need to be humble? Like, what I, what, wait, 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 look, y'all, y'all, y'all all about to be ready. I, I just want to say one thing before we go. So, like, a lot of people associate humble and arrogance. Like, they are opposite. It's a bad laugh. They are opposite. Right. It is Okay, so now y'all have Okay, I want to hear what Especially, I think it's, I think it's different for women. Um, because we are... I don't, not us in this room, but general, women in general are very judgmental. And I feel like Let's talk if, about that. if you see a woman <laughs> online being boastful, oh, she thinks she the shit. Right. That, that's I, some hating ass shit. Yes. I'm sorry, that's some hating ass that's shit. That's automatically I've been what people think. No, that's listen, hating ass <laughs> shit. a couple of years ago, <laughs> I don't listen to a lot of rap, shit. right? But a couple of years ago, Cash Dow did an interview and she was talking about, they were saying like how People were saying she too arrogant and she too and she was like That's one of my favorite job boss. Why I gotta be she was like, I ain't worried about what you doing. I, I ain't think, mad I that think you're I doing this. this. But me, I'm, I'm a yes, she was that, like, I I'm, love that. and that's just what it is. And then that's that the day I was like yes. Junk, and it's okay that I'm the junk. And if you know that I'm a, I'm the junk, then mm -hmm. good. So when it comes me, I am the junk. So when it comes to being name. quote unquote humble, it's to a certain extent. I'm not gonna no, be they humble. Want us to be down, down low. You want me? You, know, you want me to? Yeah. Very, you don't to want me hit. to scream that I'm successful. That I'm right. You know what I'm saying? You, want me, you want me to be very that. quiet. You want me to be meek. Right. You never gonna mm -hmm. get that from me. And you know, that's what I feel like. I feel like I kind of struggle with that sometimes because I feel like. Like this year, I didn't make some boss moves. I'm not gonna lie. You got announced today. Yeah, right, and, I, <laughs> I, and I'm not like, oh yeah, you know, like that. Like I, I literally just be sitting back, like, damn. I tried that, but and then one day I sat spirit, back though. and I looked out the window and I was looking at my trailer that I paid for. Period. Okay. And I was looking at the name that I came up with, and then I looked at my house. Okay. That was clean. Okay. Then I looked at my kids okay. that was doing good, and I said, it's okay. You mm -hmm. you did that. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, stop telling me I'm arrogant. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not arrogant. I just know 
that I did this, and right. you see that I did this too, and right. it makes you uncomfortable. Hold on, hold on. It makes you hold very on. uncomfortable. It, it got, it got to because for you to think you I'm the shit, me. well, baby, I am. You, you Thank see, you. you <laughs> see. I, I feel like um, when I was in high school, um, I went to Cass, so like it was. It was a different environment, Cass. But when I went to middle school, I was in eighth grade. I went to school in Inkster. And then was the rats of the rats. The, <laughs> the, it, it, was, it, was, it was terrible. I don't know if my mom, God made my mom send me there for a reason or whatever, but I literally went through hell there. Like, with girls, like, well, she thinks she all that because she got long hair. Or she what thinks she all that. You know, stuff like that. So, like, when that's I grew up, mm-hmm, when I grew up, <laughs> that's so, like, way different than we think it is, though. That's way, yeah, that's way deeper. That's a whole different that's conversation. That's a whole different podcast. True. Yeah, but when is. I grew up to find myself, um, I feel like if somebody can take the time out to say you arrogant or you not humble or you this or you that, like, I feel like it was something that you did that stood out to them, like, as women, that they can't compliment you. When he showed, when he presented this opportunity to me at first, my co-host, we both agreed, but she had other plans and she forgot. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to still go, you know, because we are one, but, you know, we can re- venture off. But when he mm-hmm. said it was all women in here, when I saw y'all all walking in here, Everybody walked in here with their head up. Everybody walked in here like they happy to be here. Like, I learned something from all of y'all, and I've never ever, you know, never even heard of y'all, and I'm glad that I was able to come today because I've learned, you know, so much. And right. all of y'all are bosses in y'all own lane, in y'all own world, and it, I don't feel like women congratulate each other enough. They so don't. we know It's like, why do you feel like you got to hate on me? Why don't you sit down and have a conversation with me, and maybe we could come up with a plan for you? You know, you never know right. what somebody can do for you, you know, or how they can help you. I don't know with this new generation on, but I want to stick with the girl, the women who are winning, and okay, see if women. figure out a way that we can come up so that we can get noticed, like how men get noticed. So, yeah. so why y'all think it's so hard for y'all to go ahead and, and, and do things together? Because like dudes, I can be like, oh man, you drink that? I drink that. Oh, what's it's up? Kinda like we a could just our thing though mm-hmm. too. I want to say something. Because we could just we cook. are women, you know. It's like we gotta. <laughs> When it's it's kind of like when 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 boy dogs we got two dogs in the house and they piss all over everything because they yeah, got to show their dominance. Territory. Sometimes because I've been to places with a lot of women and it's like you gotta push it on me that you a boss. I see that you a boss. You didn't even have to tell me that you were a boss and I saw it in you when I saw you over there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it's like we gotta prove it yes. to each other. But it's like I already saw you. You know? <laughs> yeah. You, 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 you ain't yourself. gotta show yeah. me. Yeah. You ain't gotta be mean about it because I yeah. don't like mean people. Yeah. 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 I, think- I, I can go there. <laughs> yeah. I, I ain't this safe. All my life. Okay. I, so I, I think it's heaven. You know I what think I'm it's saying? Deeper. It's true. I so. think it's, it's a tad bit d- deeper why us women, especially black women, yeah. cannot Everybody. support each other. I think it's, we come from such, I'm about to get deep. Um, <laughs> we come from such a background of where we have to compete. One for the men in our community. Mm-hmm. It's not enough of them and a lot of them are in jail. And a lot of them we don't choose from because, one, they're not on the same level as us. Yep. They don't make the same money as us. Or we just, they, we not feeling them. They goofy or whatever. So we're already <laughs> competing for the small amount of men that we think are eligible for us. Mm. So when we see another woman, oh, she's trying to go after what I got it's, or what I'm trying threat. to get. It's We see each other as a threat. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not a good thing. We need to see each other. Oh, that's my sister. She got something that I could probably learn from mm-hmm. and vice versa. Mm-hmm. That's that's when like Shay, I was like, uh, this are all this are all women pan. I said, absolutely. That's cool. I, thought, yeah. Yeah. I think that a lot of us, I think just black people in general, just for the women, I feel like there's a whole genre of music damn near dedicated to the degradation of black women. Mm. Shaking asses and titties everywhere. Every women are black women are just objects, sex objects. So when you come from constantly being pressured to just <laughs> <laughs> I feel like when there's just so much of just trying to you make the way the world get sees you. Get the producer you, out the room. Please get the <laughs> <laughs> When there's so much degradation of black women and you're constantly being judged, we judge, we, we're damned if we do, damned if we don't, mm-hmm. then it only makes sense that we start to adapt that type of mentality amongst one another. So if it's constantly your hair ain't long enough or your hair um, is too short, then you start looking at another woman like, well, she thinks she got long hair because it isn't. It's like, well, somebody actually been telling you your hair ain't good enough because it's this short. Mm-hmm. And I ain't trying to say, you know, I'm type of way about black men, but I'm just 
just saying. We was bald head scallywags for the motherfucking longest. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just got bundles. Now it's like, I'm okay. Bald head scallywags. You ain't got no family member. Okay, Jalen Weaving, you know you need it. So, Because that was our attack. Okay? That was our attack. I got a question. When do women take accountability for the wrong men that they pick? Never. Cause my thing is like this. It'd be a lot. It'd be a lot. It'd be a lot of times. I gotta keep it. I still gotta keep it. I still gotta keep it. I gotta. Keep it. I, gotta I be wanting to ask that question, dog. Yeah, because, because Thank you. A lot of times when we talk about the dudes that they got in their life that ain't shit, but when when you laid down with him, you he was the shit then. Wait, let me yeah. say it. Let me say it. This nigga shaking the table. Because a lot of times, a lot of times, like, hospital. like you got you got to take time to to know who you who you about to mess with and focus. So once you have a kid with him or you do this, you can't be like. Fuck this dude. He ain't shit. He ain't that. He ain't that. I mean, you can still hold on. You can still say that. There's a there's a, a, a certain perception, real. a reality that you face <laughs> after a certain time. You can still say he ain't shit. You can know he ain't shit. Still lay down with him. Then when you get up, you like, well, I knew he really really was well, shit. That's just the reality that you face afterwards. Sometimes you can't. I, exactly. You I want to say. I want to say this. I knew it was gonna shit. I knew it was gonna shit. That's why I did. Kinda to your point, it's already a limited amount of choices that we have, right? For us too. Right, okay. I'm not saying it. What I'm saying is sometimes as women, we give people a chance that should have never gotten a chance in the first place off the strength. No business plan with. For the culture, you know, whatever, we give somebody a chance because we see their potential and you want to be somebody that that can make you water that seed, you know, because we get that. that, that You know what I mean? Like, what I'm saying is like, oh, well, I, look. <laughs> I had that potential word will get you in trouble every time. Oh, yeah. he got the yeah, potential. See how rough with some fellas? I had to go ahead. It was getting too girly Oprah. And I, I had to go ahead. That is a good question, though. Yeah. That is a good question. Mm-hmm. No. I learned my lesson. And I'm, oh, God. I, I try to be one of them one and done. Like, I don't have to do things too many times yeah. or I can see... You walk that way, and that person got hit in the head when they went that way. And then the next person got hit in the head. I'm not going to walk that way. You I probably got to hit me in the head one good the fucking time. I used to hit me a couple times. <laughs> you know what? I feel like it was... Getting the office sound, and my mama was in the waiting room. Yeah. I knew it was like, yeah, girl, you, you you ain't going to never... Ever do this? Ever? Um, ever? See, you, 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 ever. Was, you was you was young though. You was young, but a lot of times you see I, you see that young, but you but be blinded I took by. It, I was like, heck, some people you know. are hard here. I'm gonna like, yeah. have me out here. I'm on your stupid I'm on like this. Cause it be a lot of times females be like, damn, Craig did me wrong. But then, hey, nigga, the, uh, a Dave, the same type of dude, you went right back to him. Wait, what's that? Fool me. Do it once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Third time, okay, put the blame on me. It's okay. Put the blame on me. No, yeah, no. Because I be like, no, 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 no. Because I be knowing people personally and just from afar. I'm like, damn, nigga. It's easy to play nigga. Like, what you thought was going to happen? What you thought was going to happen, dog? Nigga doing the same thing. Like that too, like. I think it's easier to play victim to your circumstances than it is to accept the truth about them. It's so easy to be like, that nigga did me wrong. It's like, but you knew that nigga was doing bitches wrong. Stop playing. You know, yeah. That's how you the type of nigga he cause. was. <laughs> and you fell for that potential, and that's why you in the situation you in. It's a See, lot easier to be like, that potential okay, word. And sometimes our dudes be seeing like, you know, she might got a little potential. We could save her. Okay. Oh, oh, fuck you ain't oh, saving me. <laughs> What's that three six five? I ain't in a fucking <laughs> bitch. No, you ain't doing that. Some people hey, don't at- want to do better. <laughs> it takes work to like internally be a better person. So some people don't have the strength to keep it going to yeah. further themselves. Instead but of saying, you, you know what? Get it from me though. You know what? That was my bad. I knew better. I shouldn't have did that. Or whatever. You know, some people just like to be victim because it's easy to be a victim. It is easy. Hear me out. I think that a lot of that ride or die culture is, is why we got that. True. A lot of that is like the the longer I'm committed to some bullshit, the more likely it is to succeed. In. I mean, granted, and I do not believe you, I, in that. I don't, but I think mm-hmm. that in, on one side, when it comes to success and working hard and accomplishing your dreams, I think there is a direct correlation between what you're willing to struggle for and work for to what you're going to be successful in. So yeah. if you keep pushing mm-hmm. it in, in your business, yeah. But if you keep dating this not shit ass nigga that ain't showed you <laughs> shit, you ain't gonna get shit. Because y'all, go, you know? y'all can ride for each other if y'all know that y'all both working towards something yeah, but like that's just. The thing. 
mean, mm-hmm. it gotta be equal. You guys gotta yeah. be on the same page. But y'all be dating. I mean, I ain't saying y'all because I ain't dating some niggas like that. But you, <laughs> you be dating niggas that ain't got nothing, that can't give you nothing, ain't gonna plan on giving you nothing, and you trying to build him up. And yeah. I think that builds resentment. Can yeah. a woman build it, no man? It, it you know, always think, goes back to the picking the right partner. Yeah. Exactly. They gonna also, change when they want to. Also, yeah. I feel like and you, you not gonna make them change. And you ain't gotta wait for them to change. I feel like you need to know when to let go, and that be the problem. Because once you start getting that first red flag, that second red flag, now, now look, you didn't. Cause, but sometimes, sometimes y'all be thinking y'all can change the dude, and he don't want to be changed. Exactly. He just trying, he's he just trying to smash, and then he got no, a couple of them. No, 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 no,
And then she got her a, a husband fit her. And I got a wife that fit me. And together we we all good. Ain't no ain't no hate, none of that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy for her because guess what? If my son go over her house, I ain't gotta be her, her husband's ass because he a good dude. <laughs> and then vice versa. My well, my son, she know that I got a good wife, so like it's no problem. So as long as that junk is good, my mom told me a long time ago, if you Break up with the person you had a kid with, like, ain't no point in being mad unless you still want to fuck around with them. Yeah. Right, if y'all don't exactly. like each other, but y'all got that common bond, which is the, which is the kid, then y'all good. I say that all the time because, like, I co-parent with my do- my I'm oldest daughter. Too. Yeah, my <laughs> oldest daughter, her <laughs> dad, and he has a family, like, completely different than mine. And I'm just like, a lot of times it doesn't work because somebody else is still interested. For sure, that's and a fact. And once you already know, like, we not, we never get back together. I don't want you, you don't want me, this is only about her. I didn't have Things to go through eat, none of that. You know, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have to go through any of that because, like I said, that was my son, and that was it. So when my husband came around, first off, when he came around, he didn't even want me. Let's let's. I'm gonna just tell the this, truth. This, okay. Tell this, this story. This, this I nice. loved him. Okay, I did not even know his <laughs> name. Damn. And I the loved pill on his man. <laughs> <laughs> I loved him. And oh, how did y'all meet? Right. I she, met him at choir rehearsal. Okay. Uh, no, he, he in the church. He wasn't in the choir. He wasn't in the choir. Was he, he was in the like church the, though? He was the no, he was. He was actually his father is a pastor. Oh. oh. So he was working. Even better. Um, we were like. <laughs> <laughs> we meet up um, twice a year, so I, I sang in a choir. So we would meet at different churches, you know, for choir rehearsal. And he was working. And I'm like, who's still there right there? Because he, I like him. And I was trying to flirt with him, but he wasn't getting it. See, don't that be so, irritating. So, like, for a month. I'm like, dang, I got to wait a month before I'm able to see him again because we're not going to have rehearsal or anything. And he didn't show up to church. So I asked the guy I saw at their church, like, what's his name and is he married? And he laughed at me. And I'm like, I'm serious. Like, what's his name? And somebody else came up and they had him on the phone like, here he is. He on the phone, and I'm like, Oh wow! Uh, so like, you had to shoot your shot. Did you shoot your shot? Yeah. So that was like a and Tuesday, was that and we went on a date because yeah. uh, she married now. Right. Right. No, it didn't happen that easy. But you got him. Did he your husband? Nah. We was together, and he dumped me. What? Okay. He no, he the didn't. Blessing. And I was at work. Oh, and wow. I still That's had four more hours on my shit. Ain't that the worst? Oh, That's the worst. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh, oh my god. 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 <laughs> no, I was at work. Did he text you or did he call he you? He text me. Oh, no, I damn, that was a real oh, nigga right there. Wow. It was like my world. <laughs> <You're not. laughs> <laughs> 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 nigga text you like this. Oh, I'm the dummy the because worst. I went out on a date with him that next week after he done. But he's still your husband. He my husband now. It took three years. That's he did right. not want she me. She was like, hey. I would call and check. Okay, I was just calling to see how you doing. I'm, I'm calling So you, you like back. the female I'm Steve Irvin? I'm calling No, it was like, um, <laughs> it was a little different than that. And then one time he <laughs> texted me like three years later because we would go out every now and then throughout three years and then wow. we didn't have any communication. He called me and was like, you want to go to breakfast? I was like, yeah. We went to breakfast. Right no doubt. <laughs> I was talking to somebody, but I always said if he came back, I ain't talking to nobody else instantly. So you just knew he was I the knew one. that was my man. He just didn't know he was my <laughs> man. That's funny. That's funny. And then we went to That's breakfast. And we started hanging out, and we got back together December 23rd, 2016. Oh, so and we was married anniversary is February 11th, 2017. Oh, we okay. got married in two weeks of him asking me. Like, oh, you like we that had down. a conversation. You was not playing like, no game. <laughs> what is this? I love what her. What we gonna do? <laughs> like, I'm ready to ask the kids. Like, get it this don't going. take all that. It, it don't, don't take all that. We got married in two weeks. I'm a loafing. We've been know. married. Yeah. We've been Vegas. doing good. I'm a we loafing for sure. Houses. That's what's up. That's what's up. We both can start successful businesses. Okay, plug your hubby business so, real quick. My husband, he has a business. It's called Jack's Painting. So he does painting. He's a software engineer, but his, his business is oh, a painting. Oh, he got that coin. Business. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think we doing good. We lit. And he didn't even want me. Now he loves me. Now, now, now he didn't want me. Yeah. And he didn't even want me. Back then. <laughs> 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 oh, she's they might, they don't know about spaghetti, dog. They don't know about spaghetti. You probably be cheating through the house. Like, remember they don't know about that spaghetti, dog. I know. I tell them all the time. Like, you remember that? Spaghetti. Remember you dumped me? <laughs> oh, my God. Remember you dumped me? It could have been the time. And it could have been 
could have been a That's what he said. He said he wanted to be able to give me everything. So when he felt like he was able, he was in a position to give me everything, he came back. Okay. So I had to respect that. Based off of that. So, shot when you proposed, I was just about to ask that. Question. When did you feel? So, what was like the basis of it? Like, were you waiting until you felt like you could give your wife like everything, everything. or, or I know you like, like, for like? <laughs> <laughs> is it like I a certain everything. point, like financially, or like in, like a life no, bro. status that no, you were like, waiting on? I don't know. I wanted to do it, but I just didn't know how to do it. And her family kept messing it up. <laughs> like, I wanted to do it in front of her mom, her grandma, her other grandma who was saying Milwaukee, like, but it was always messed up. Mm-hmm. So my time, my time was kind of trash. You know, I got, I think I got a plan for the future that's gonna make up for it. But no, I just I felt like it was time. You know, what I'm saying I, it wasn't no, we ain't no point playing playing house and junk. Then you just don't want it. And we going around people. She don't know it, but I thought about. Hold um, on, let me stop you right there. Ain't no point in playing house. Yeah, I talked about that. You can play a little bit. Y'all got like, the you, 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 you can play a little bit. But at the wild, you like the hard thing. I started checking up. That's but no, what I call you it. You ain't got to play house with a nigga for him to fucking marry you. But no, when I went okay. to um her uh I went to her cousin um wedding, which is like, that's my, that's my daughter now. He my son. He my daughter guy of uh, father too. Um, and I'm like, damn, this shit look dope. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was happy damn much, John Dog. Shout out to Lance John. But uh, yeah, I'm like, damn, it's something that I I want to do. And my mom never got married. She always wanted to get married. So I like, I never had that in my crib. I don't know nobody. I've been way more funerals than I've been to weddings. Same yeah, I've probably same. been like three, three, three weddings maybe. Four. Yeah. So it's like you don't see that jump because like none of my homies married. They still do the same thing. So at the, at a point in time, I'm like, well, shit, this the, this the one. Let me go ahead and go ahead and give me a right a right so, time a jump. So you know what, what what I always and I always saw you your post. I always love when you post about that. You know how me. you know me. How your life uh, <laughs> just got for the better and how you accomplished a lot of things once you got your got with your wife. I think we talked about what was yeah, it for sure. coaching yeah. and stuff and coaching. just a lot of things. And then you I think you were saying something about your parents like when you got with her, her parents became your parents and yeah, how you just sure. built really strong bonds. What about give me that Alice? <laughs> <laughs> I always love him. I be confident. So what? What about her? And how did you know? Like this? This it? No. Now I ain't trying to sound corny and junk. Cause like, I, there's no such thing I'm as corny. Thug, love man. is love. Now, I knew from the jump. Black. I knew from the jump. Like how she okay. said she knew that was her husband. I knew like we'd be, uh, we'd be together for sure. And then her parents even topped it off because my mom told me something that's real. If you meet a woman and there ain't no dudes in the family, run away. So it was dudes and families. <laughs> you ain't got all aunties and just kids. Okay. Like get the fuck out of there. Okay. But no, like it, her family that that play a a, a major uh, a yeah. role in in it too because I feel like you shouldn't get with somebody who family is fucked up. Family. Mm-hmm. That's gonna fuck y'all up. Yeah, that's part of your family. Too. I talked to her. Her this is her stepdad. I'm cool with her stepdad side of family. I'm cool with her dad side of family. Her mom side of family. I love my in laws. Yeah, that's yeah, they cool them up. And then with me, my family, a lot of my family had passed away. My both my parents passed away. Yeah. So like my grandmother, my grandfather's like everybody gone. So it's like you missed that part. Yeah. So not only do you got like a partner that you could fuck with, well mess with, <laughs> but you got a whole nother family. Like yeah. damn, you got some motherfucking good baggage. Okay. <laughs> and I know she's off the camera, but Miss Mrs. Can we ask you how did you, did you know he was the one or was when did yes, she know look no, at me no, I'm a G. No, she's she's talk, she's talking to the ladies, she's talking to the ladies. How, how did you know you he was the one or when did you know i don't know how to answer that question <laughs> you don't um but one of the things that i can say is that i always said that i would never be with somebody that had kids that was what? That's a big thing. I'm a good dad. Can't you can't beat that. Shout out to the black dad. I knew that when you answered the phone. You st- you was busy and you still answered the phone. <laughs> oh, no, for sure. That. For sure. And like I said. Uh, uh, my uh, daddy don't, didn't answer the phone. Well, he was busy. He didn't answer the phone. <laughs> and like I said, my son is a grown. My son is the same age as her brother. So my son, oh, he just turned 15. So it was like, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like I brought no baby. And then like I brought a grown man in the house. Like, mm-hmm. well, uh, what we eat? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 So I wanted to be married. Can I share my story? Can I share my story? Hold on, before we go, I did want to say that Shot made a really good point that when you marry to people, you definitely want to look at their family. A lot. I think a lot of our generation is a lot of it's me and him against the world, and it's like, yeah, that's nice and dandy, but like you said, you want a village. You You want a village. I hate her family without her. You, okay, and that's how it should be. It shouldn't just be us. Like yes. that shit lonely. That shit boring, and it really boring. isolates you. And that's how you start creating sure. problems that's not even fucking there. It's hurt. Because my in laws are wonderful with my son. 
and that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, that's how I heard, heard they, they yeah. hands on with my son. That's that's their grandson. That's their grandson. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And my daddy, I was like a daddy's girl, but a yeah. mama's girl too. Only when they not getting on my nerves. It's crazy. Like if they not getting Facts. on my nerves, I lean too much. Ain't fucking I'm, with me. Yeah. So it's like when my husband, my my husband actually <laughs> asked my dad. If for your he hand. Marry me. Yeah. And my dad was like, you know, it ain't just her. He was like, well, I could take care of both of them. You know, <laughs> like, that ain't that ain't us. the problem. You know what I'm saying? And my dad was like, <laughs> but once she gone, you know, that's it. Like, before they could say, who give this person away, my daddy was already saying, I mm-hmm. do. You know, he was, he couldn't even let the pastor finish saying. Yeah, yeah. Your yeah. dad is such he, like my he dad. Like, I do. And he sat down. Like, he was ready. You just gave me away that quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We... It was so quick, <laughs> but off. it's like <laughs> together, you know, you gotta have. Cause my mama loved my husband, you know. She, my husband's name is Adonis, but she used to have this joke. She used to call him Orthodonis. My mama never called nobody <laughs> that name, name. And so his name was Orthodonis. And I'm like, if she give you a name, you know, it's she mess with you, cause my mama don't like nobody. Yeah. Um. Nobody is good enough for her kids, you know. That's how so it when my be. husband came, she was like, He actually is a knight and he take care of my daughter. That's yeah, how I'm talk. So it's like everybody let me had that village. Everywhere I go, sure. everybody thought shout out the truth. You crazy go But be that him. was me. My husband Sorry. is very low <laughs> low key and I'm like real hyper and up there. So it's like <laughs> We balance. It's the coffee. It's, a, <laughs> it's like I just be hype. No, for sure. Just now, you know, I want to. Uh, we had some good conversation. I want to get on the business, but before we, I know, um, Ashley wanted to speak yeah. on, on her on hers. Oh yeah, I want to talk about my hubby real quick. <laughs> yeah. She like plug y'all yeah. up, girl. Like, first of all, Goddamn I feel Kyle. like uh, <laughs> I'm trying not to cry because all y'all stories are so nice. Yeah. Listen, yeah. it ain't like that on TV. Love is lit. Listen, it, it I'm feel about, good. I'm about to tell you. I'm about to tell you my story because I feel like the my shade story be so is unwarranted. Lit for like, no. uh, go ahead. Ash. Okay, so. <clears throat> Okay, so I had a baby already, and I kind of was feeling like really down because my whole I did this wrong because I was I was like it don't matter what I do in life I don't want to be a baby mama like I was telling myself that all the time just because I felt like if that happened to me I would be unwanted. I that was like what I felt like because I I grew up in a family where we didn't have a father and it was a lot of us it was five of us and we just it was that's how it was so. Once I had a baby, I was like, oh my gosh, I did the one thing that I said I wasn't gonna do, right? And so, it was hard for me to even start dating again, like taking Mm -hmm. people serious because you have all, and I have a daughter, and so it's a little bit different because you have to be even more protective of her, you know, when you're like, okay, do I trust this person? Are they gonna see them as their daughter, all this stuff, and so, once me and my husband started dating, he, uh, my daughter was two at the time. And it was like the biggest thing that I wanted to like tell him like on our first date, cause I'm like, I don't know if he know already because <laughs> most people do know, but I don't know, like how do you bring it up? How do you talk about it, you know? And then everything started going like really smooth. And I was like, I wanted to, like I used to talk about my relationship a lot. And somebody asked me, like, why do you talk about your relationship a lot? And I was like, because I didn't think that finding love after having a baby was possible. Preach. And not just that. Speak on just, it. Not just that love where you'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, this is his stepdaughter. You know, like, she don't care about him. Like, they together, I'm like, I'm still here. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes they really just get into their little zone where they do stuff together. Like, he take her to school. They talk. You know, if she got something coming up. Like, she, he won this real big uh, poetry competition. And one day, we was just sitting around in the living room. And my, and my our baby, she just started spitting the whole the pool. Whole and we like, oh, oh my so gosh. Cute. You know, and then it's just, um, yeah, like, when you were saying, somebody asked, like, when did you know that they was the one? I, like, it was literally, I feel like it was a time it hit me, and I was just like, this is my person. So we were traveling, and we were, this is our first, like, international trip together, I think. Um, We were going to South Africa. We had, look, okay. (laughs) Gotta be. It it was fun, I'm not going to lie. It was like, it was like one thing I really loved. Like, that was one of the, it was a, a, a experience of a lifetime. 
So we had one day in London, and we were supposed to go from London to Cape Town, and we are about to miss our flight. Like, somebody told us we were supposed to be at one gate, and you got to take a train to get to these gates. So we, like, on the complete opposite side. So I'm, like, panicking. I was just like, that's my worst fear is missing a flight. The flight is already 13 hours. We in London, so if we missed this flight. We can't get it to another day. We going to miss all these things. You know, like, I'm just, like, in panic mode. And he just grabbed me and was like... It's gonna be okay, and I don't know that's my crazy, how that's he my said it. How I don't know how he touched me, but when he said that, my soul was mm-hmm. like, "You can trust this man, mm-hmm. okay? And he wow. is gonna make sure you are okay." And that was like the security I had been looking for my cry. entire mm-hmm. life. That but it's that, that's real, though. That's real. It, that is it so hit real. Me so yeah. hard. I was like. Oh. <laughs> now, uh, now, we had some dope conversations, but we was all brought here, you know, for a reason. I want y'all to just speak on y'all business, uh, business. I don't know. I'm business. Hood, yeah, business. business. And I want y'all just just business. explain like where it started, how it get started, and you know, you know, saying just you know, speak on it for me. I'll go first. Right, go um, this my girl, y'all. Y'all don't even know this my girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, your fake plus size model came out of practically nowhere. Um, it was in the middle of the pandemic. My dad had just passed away, and I had got off of work, and I'm like, I need to do something else. I can't sit in this house and think about this man not being here. Got to do something else. So I've always had the ambition to model. I've always been told, you're too thick, you're too short, you won't sell. So I said, okay, watch me. Mm-hmm. That's it. So... I took some pictures with Q11. Shout out to Q11 photography. Fire, bro. Fire. 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 Something there. I took my initial photos with them. I posted them, and it's been up ever since. Okay, period. Ever since. Congratulations. Thank you. What's up? My my best friend came up with the name, Your Fave Plus Size Model, because I'm like, I I don't want to just be like a nut, not not to downplay, other models but i want to have a specific brand like i when when you hear my name like i want it to ring bells i want to be different Mm -hmm. and she was like well you need to brand yourself it's not enough that you're just a model you got to do something else so i said well i gotta have a name she said be everybody's favorite plus size model bam said bam (laughs) (laughs) and the reason like it's a like a wand in the my logo because i think of myself as a unicorn i'm a delta I've right, gone, no. I have a bachelor's degree and a, um, a master's degree. I work on the corporate level, oh, but I also yeah. model. So, like, if you don't see that a lot. That girl like, ain't one of them. <laughs> okay, she ain't one, one of them. them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I think I really do think of myself as like, like, like a damn fairy. Like, you don't see that type of girl every day. You know what Usually I'm saying? Usually when people make it corporate, they be corporate. And yeah. That's yeah. It. I, I, can't, I can't just sit in a corporate setting. I have to be able to like let my creative side shine and like just sit in behind not just not saying that it doesn't stuff like it doesn't do me well like being in the corporate world because i love my job i love what i do i work within the automotive industry i love working within the automotive industry my my father was you know he was a plant worker all his life so I'm, that's pretty much probably where it came from mm-hmm. but i work on the corporate side so like it i love my job however modeling gives me a purpose like mm-hmm. i would not be sitting at this table if i was just working at gm you see what right. i'm saying yeah mm-hmm. so yes that's what's up i'm yeah. gonna borrow a dollar for me too but uh <laughs> what about you uh jazz with the um with, with, the, with the with the coffee and stuff so originally i had a culinary background um, okay I to mm-hmm. come on chef. I, I went to go lightly Man, I, went to to it up, girl. I went to college i didn't want to go to college i wanted to go to the navy so i can go to Le Cordon Blue, but I didn't want to pay for Le Cordon Blue, so I was willing to go to the Navy. Just clarify, what is Le Cordon Blue? It's like one of the biggest culinary schools. Okay. It's a couple of them, but I, I was like, I'm going, I'm from the east side of Detroit. That's I'm in going Paris, to right? Gang. Le Cordon Blue. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, no, my dad was like, no, you're going to college. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so when I came home with that baby, and um, a child. he bought you went to college. What they do, child. He bought you went to college. <laughs> I showed him. <laughs> I, I went to culinary school, and, I, and you know, I did well because that's what I always wanted to do. So I worked in that field. I was a line cook. I worked in a gourmet deli. I did pastry chef, all of that stuff. That's dope. I was tired, though. 
because you know when you work in that industry you're gonna work afternoon so i was missing a lot of stuff with my son um you know i would see him he had started going to school so I, I would really only see him for like an hour and everything and um i started working at a target starbucks i like that job i don't know if it was because it was the people or was i you know i was able to work because we used to have to read these books mm. on coffee because if somebody come up to you you have to be able to tell them what type of coffee it is. They say, I only like coffee from this region. You have to tell them, well, this is the coffee you like. Mm. Then I worked at an actual Starbucks, which was a whole different world when we had to take virtual classes to um, work this job. And this, it just became more interesting to me. So one day I told my husband, like, one day I want to open up a coffee shop. And he was like, okay. And I was selling dinners at the house. I I was that lady. I sold dinners. I sold soup. You Come know, on, stuff like that. Yes. That's what I did. <laughs> so when, I think I had like $75 and I sold some dinners and I made like almost $400. Oh. And my husband was like, well, how much you got? I'm like, I got almost $400. And he matched it. So I was able to That's start what the fuck my, I'm talking about. my company. You know, reached. I had been researching um, roasters because... One day I'll, I'll roast my own coffee. It's just not not there yet. When I get a brick and mortar, then I'll be roasting my own coffee. Right now, I'm gonna pay somebody to just do As do it, it for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I did it. It's been popping. And time. it was like, no, nah, it wasn't that easy oh, yeah. because people be like, "Oh, I don't like coffee. I don't like coffee." So I, at my first couple of like 40 pounds of coffee, I kind of like gave it away, you know, to try to get people mm -hmm. because. You know, they like to say black people don't like coffee, but we do. We, yes, we are we do. into I this love coffee. coffee. Like, we literally, that's all we I've been thinking about We just don't have it in our, in our areas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we'll have, like, say, for instance, a Starbucks. A Starbucks won't be in the city. It'll be on the outer skirts yep. of that of a yeah. sub-city um, or downtown <laughs> Detroit. Yeah. So I was like, well, we could, we could have some good stuff, too. So that's when I... You know, start just going places like here. Get my coffee. Get my coffee. Get my coffee. Then I expanded to tea, and lemonade, and um, then I started bottling my drinks. And then when the pandemic hit, I got a little bit of um unemployment money, <laughs> and I took that as you should yeah, with sure. the other money, and I put it all towards now, working on my trailer. Amen. Okay. Now, um, like I said, I don't want to rush everybody. We got a couple minutes left, so I know Sherelle, you got a show, and yeah. What? Adora, That's you got a podcast. Mm -hmm. So if y'all can just My talk. My story is real quick. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so I got a podcast. Um, it's The Real Talk with Adora and Daisy. This has been my friend for over 10 years. We met at CAS. We both went and graduated from CAS Tech. Mm. Um, we both are Pisces. I don't know if anybody knows much about Pisces, I but do. we my are water signs. My best friend is a Pisces. But my birthday is in February. Her birthday is in March. So oh, see, we are two, two different, different Pisces. Pisces. <laughs> so me and her always be arguing, but like not, it's like more of a debate. So like she would say the sky is blue and I'd be like, well, it's kind of blue, but it got some pink in it. Like, you know, so like what happened was we was talking about like political back when Trump was still in office. So she like made this post or whatever. And, you know, the younger generation, they don't care about voting or they don't care about who's in office. But like that's really who got the power over us in the world. So she made this post. So I was arguing with people under the post. And long story short, I'm like, let's start a podcast. But I'm like, but I don't like talking to people. But I <laughs> like talking to people that I know, but not like, you know, people I don't know. So we just started it. And then, like, we started I was so nervous. Like, I didn't know what to say. I didn't want to say the wrong thing. And I'm like, nobody going to think I'm interesting because my life is really boring. <laughs> but come to find out, people really do like us. So... <laughs> We talk about a lot of stuff on the podcast. We talk about dating, relationships. Uh, my partner is married, so she would have loved to be here. I can't wait to tell her all about it. But well, y'all gonna come back on? Yeah, together? recently we. I don't know if y'all are really big podcast listeners, but Million Dollars Worth of Game with Gilly and Wallow. Mm -hmm. We just met them. Oh. So yeah, so they looking for a podcast to sign. I was telling them like, even if y'all don't sign us, like we got dope podcasts in Detroit, like yes. that people are sleeping on. Yes. You know, if you don't got those followers or you're not a lip, right. whatever they want to say, you know, people don't want to listen to you. And I'm just like, that's weird. But they really sat down and gave us a lot of games. So regardless where we go with it, you know, we appreciated that. And yeah, like, so absolutely. now I look at podcasts and different so yeah, for sure. now, i got uh, everybody cards so i'll be reaching out to everybody so yeah, it's, about, it's about time to wrap up i know you touched on your your business a little bit and stuff like that but uh just everybody kind of give everybody um where they can find y'all on social media 
and all that stuff, and they can do more research and, uh, you know, get with y'all. Definitely. So if y'all want to follow me on social media, um, my business page is simple.natural. The dot is spelled D-O-T. Um, yeah, I'm always on there, so just check for me in the new year. If you got bad skin, go yeah. to her. Mm-hmm. Please do. <laughs> Bro, her I got that. <laughs> My husband moisturized. I got that day. fire for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you, Sherelle? Go ahead. Where you find um, you, you can follow my talk show at Let's Talk Dot the Show, or you can find me on my personal page at Miss Carter underscore One X. What about you, Britt? You can find me at Oh That's Britt Brett on just about everything Instagram and Twitter, <laughs> and <laughs> Brittany Newton on Facebook. <laughs> Adore. RT Adore the letter N Daisy on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me Detroit Black Coffee on Instagram, Facebook, or DetroitBlackCoffee.com. For sure, for sure. And I just want to, th- you know, thank y'all for coming on the show. It was a dope conversation. I knew when I reached out to, you know, saying y'all five, it would be a good conversation. Y'all go ahead and, you know, mess with each other and stuff like that. I want to thank Podcast with Miles for letting us use the uh, venue. You know, we in the hood all day. But we had to come and do a corporate for y'all. <laughs> Thanks for having us. For sure, for sure. Congratulations. Yeah, appreciate it. Well, you know, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I oh, yeah, appreciate it. Shout out to my homie Q, man. He been making it all happen with the edits and stuff and giving y'all the shows on time. You feel me? So, uh... Another hundred. We'll be, we'll be signing one of those major podcast deals on, on the 200 yeah, yeah. episodes. Okay. So y'all know what it is. So, yeah, it's shout out to everybody. Episode 100. Got the, some good females out here. Good ladies, good ladies, good ladies. Did she tell you that already? We <laughs> got women, that. females, ladies, y'all all good. Be, be, we got we got women bosses. We just all bosses. Now. Okay, yeah, we, we, we got some good people. Yeah. You know, hey, good people. Good people. <laughs> Till next time, I'll let your boy. Hey, um, yeah, stay safe and don't mess with the wrong dude and don't mess with the wrong woman. <laughs> <laughs>